Tom Frose. I'm a research professor at the Institute for Applied Mathematics and uh, Systems Research at the National Autonomous University of uh, Mexico. And uh, here we are in Cancun at the International Conference Center uh, on the Sunday before the big event, setting up everything. The artists are here waiting to make their installations. Everybody's excited to see how this is going to turn out and um, we will give you more updates during the week. Eh, aquí en la conferencia tenemos eh, nueve conferencias magistrales, varias sesiones paralelas, eh, ahorita hay varios talleres y tutoriales y, y pues ha, ha llegado gente de, de todo el mundo a, a participar. How did you start in the field of artificial intelligence? Well, uh, my background is in the sciences. Um, I have a degree in nuclear engineering. And towards the end of my degree, uh, I, I was interested in intelligent systems. And that time it was because I wanted to apply them to complex systems. But my interest moved from there into uh, cognitive systems and robotics and so I did my PhD in the area of evolutionary robotics and then from there it moved to um, more theoretical interest about the nature of life, the nature of mind and so on. Hmm. Okay. How did you start in the field of artificial life? Well I, I was originally studying physics um, and I I started to do some biological modeling, uh, some computer modeling as, 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 part of, as part of that. And then I just started, the, at the time I think when I was studying, the, the game Creatures was emerging and so you actually had uh, learning agents with neural networks and I just started to get fascinated by this and by the fact that you could think about biology in a sort of mathematical way in a whole, whole systems, systems sort of sense and so I went to Sussex mm -hmm and did the master's degree in evolutionary and adaptive systems and that just started me off on a, you know, on a whole different path really. Okay, so, Randall, can you tell me about how did you get involved in the field of artificial life? Uh, as a graduate student I actually um, went to the first artificial life workshop which was in 1987 in Los Alamos, New Mexico. It was organized by Chris Langton and that really, seeing some of the work that was being done there really got me interested in, in participating myself. Uh, I started out being 
interested in artificial intelligence, but then I moved into um, thinking more about the biological side of things, and that kind of took me into the artificial life area. Um, my name is Ken Rinaldo, and uh, this work is called A Biopoiesis Microbiome. And, and what you're looking at here in the A Biopoiesis Microbiome work is you're looking at a work that is an artificial life work that is controlled by the bacteria of the planet that are being um, that are mediating the weather patterns and what this what this robot does and what this software does is it goes out and it looks for live weather data so it's looking to the machine nature of all the sensors surrounding the planet and allowing us to sense the changing of the weather and what it's doing is it's dynamically changing the video signal and making the, the colors of the video dynamically change and evolve over time. But what's also happening is that there are machine voices that are being processed through some very amazing software and the machine voices are being changed into animal voices, almost like they're crying out to us. On the other hand, the animal voices are being changed into machine voices and this is being run through a very very complex piece of software. Um, one of the things that I'm really fortunate to uh, be able to do is sometimes work with very talented programmers and uh, Trademark Gunderson who is my studio assistant is maybe the best programmer I know on the planet for uh, the piece of software that at least runs the some of the patches here and uh, this software basically allows this to continually evolve, continually evolve in relation to uh, the evolution of our weather so in a way it's a self reciprocating system because it's both the piece that creates heat but it also looks at heat and it looks at human and anthropogenic effects on our weather patterns and the machine nature of our planet and how that's now transforming our planet into something that may in fact become uninhabitable for not only us as a species but you'll notice as well many of the sounds that you hear are actually the sounds of animals that are going extinct. In a way it's almost like their last cry, it's almost uh, uh, them wailing to us and saying, notice me, notice me, uh, I would like to be acknowledged as a living thing, as part of this living system that the planet is. And um, this is what the abiopoiesis microbiome is about. It's about trying to acknowledge that the earth is a living system and we're a part of that living system but we shouldn't get to dominate it with our machine ways. We have to find machines that are more sensitive to living systems. And right now that's not the case with our carbon and our methane producing machines. Thank you.